This is the lab on Nat, and I think this is the first time ever I've sat down. If you haven't already, click the link on the web interface to launch the lab environment so it can be built while we're talking. And let's talk about the scenario that we're going to do. This should be a lot of fun. We're going to apply the NAT skills that we learned in a functional routed environment. So we'll be performing most of our work, our configuration on R1AZ, which is the internet facing router. And the internet is actually being simulated as 192.168.1.x network. As a matter of fact, there's a specific web server out there that we've built called 192.168.1.100. That's going to be what we use to test and make sure that everything is working well. So what we're going to do first and foremost is access the router and verify we can ping the simulated internet uh, web server at that address. We're then going to go to PC 10 and attempt to ping the simulated server at that address. The ping attempts should fail in a major way because uh, this is all coming from a private subnet, this 10.16.0 subnet, right? And as you're going through to the internet, private subnets are not going to work. The internet service provider will filter them out and we've created an emulated environment that is exactly the same. So we now need to configure NAT overload on router one AZ using either a pool of addresses. That's one method to use. And you could do a pool of uh, up to six addresses there, 10 through 15, or by using the IP address directly assigned to this interface. It's two different NAT configurations, both with the same result. So when it's all said and done, we should be able to ping the web server and access that web server using the HTTP interface. This is a real client, so we can pull up the Windows interface and uh, use a web browser to access that uh, web server. And we should get, if all is well, a web page back to us. We then will verify the NAT translation. So as always, I'm going to flip back to the instructions. I want you to pause the instructions and then go at it. Go at the, the configuration of this. If you get stuck or just want to see the answer as I walk through it, I'm going to do it right after that. So you ready? Back here. Ready, set, pause. Hopefully you did. Now, let's dive in. So I've got the uh, uh, router one. That oh, Actually, I <laughs> before I do that, I should make sure. Oh, <laughs> give me a sec. Still loading. Boom, there we go. All right, let's get back to our lab. Okay, so Access Router 1 Arizona. So let's jump over there. We're on the Access 1 switch right now. Router 1 Arizona, and verify we can ping the simulated internet web server at 192.168.1.100. I'm actually going to do one better. I'm going to do a show IP interface brief first. Uh, I just want to make sure, yeah, 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 there we go. Th so this interface, which is gig 1 slash 0, which is this guy right here, is connected to the internet 192.168.1.100. Five being our simulated internet, I should say. 192.168.1.100, and bada bing, we are online. Good. Okay, so then now I want to go to PC 10. Let's do that. Flip over here to client PC and probably have to log in. No, we're already there. Cool. Um, we'll open a command prompt. And if all is well, let me flip back here. It says access to it, an attempt to ping that server. If all is well, it actually shouldn't work for once, right? Uh, we're looking for it not to work 1.100. And sure enough, it is failing because there's no NAT configured. The internet or even our simulated internet will reject that out of the box. So uh, we'll come back here uh, now. Step three, configure NAT overload on R1AZ using either a pool of addresses or using the specific interface. And you know what? Um, I'm sitting down. I could I could sit here all day and my legs not. Actually, standing desks are amazing. I love standing desks, but there's times where your, your knees just kind of lock up. So, um, so I'm, I'm going to do both. Let's do... What do you want to do first, the pool or the interface? How about um, how about we do the interface? It's a little easier, right? So um, we'll go back here, get over here to DC Nug. Uh, we're on router one. Okay, so the first step in configuring this is going to be to identify our inside and outside interfaces. So I'm going to go into global config mode, interface GI0 slash 0, which is the interface connected to the internal Arizona network. So... I'll say IP NAT inside, bam, right there, good. Uh, look over there, we've got uh, 2 slash 0, which connects to the Metro E, so let's go into interface GI 2 slash 0. So if, if we're using the other sites, Las Vegas, uh, or I think Nevada and Florida, 
we would want them to be able to access the internet as well. So those will also be inside networks. Uh, the interface GI1 slash zero, that's our outside interface connecting to the internet. Outside, good, good, good. Okay, back out from there. Now I'm going to I'm going to create a standard access list. Remember, when you're setting up NAT, you need to create an access list that identifies the group of IP addresses that will be translated. So we're going to match the things that are inside our network, which uh, should end up being the hang on. Let's go back here. Ah, we don't have subnets. So I'm just going to you know what? I'm going to I'm going to get crazy, crazy. I tell you, I'm just going to say anything starting with the number 10 is valid to be natted. Now remember, in wildcard mask form, we're gonna have to flip that around. So we'll do, uh, let's do, I'll do a named access list. Uh, IP access list, and we'll say uh, standard access list. The name will be natted. It's like that movie, what, what was it? Uh, taken, natted, drama. So we've got the natted access list. I'm gonna come in here and do uh, permit and we'll say anything with the 10 0, 0, 0, with a wildcard mask of 0.255.255.255. Remember, it's the backwards of the subnet mask, right? Bam, enter, good. Uh, back out of that, access list out of the way. Now all we should need to do is tie it together. Since we're just doing the interface initially, uh, we don't have to configure a pool of addresses. If you're doing a pool, that's one more step along the way. So I'll do, again, show IP, Interface brief, just so I can remind myself which one is the outside. Good. I'm going to do IP NAT, and I'm going to say it's going to be from the inside of the network out. The source addresses uh, on the inside, I mean, this, by the way, this is the mother of all commands. If you struggle with it, you will. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I can just rattle it off is I've I've been teaching CCNA for 20 years, so of course it just it's just like blah, it just happens, right? Don't feel bad if you can't just just it's it may take a little more time. So I want to NAT from the inside of my network to the out. The source addresses are going to be identified by a list of addresses, and that access list is NATed with drama. We're gonna NAT them out the interface. Now I can't even remember that. I did it, and now I forgot. Okay, it is 1 slash 0, gigabit Ethernet, 1 slash 0, and we are going to overload. So easy to forget that, and then you only get one translation through, and all the rest get blocked, right? I think that's it. That's it. We can head over to our client and verify that this is working. So let's do uh, an up arrow on the ping, and woo -hoo! Hang on. Got my southern view. Woo! Anyway, anyway, I, 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 I wasn't, I was, I was going to try. All right. And then we'll also go here and we'll do, uh, 192.168.1.100. Reason I'm doing that. Reason I'm doing that is I want to see some NAT translations. Watch this happen. Bam. Look at that. Internet information services in the flesh. We can come back here and do a show IP NAT translations. And oh, look at that goodness, goodness, goodness gracious. Look at all that. Look, what, what is all this? Notice that we have the translations we expect, which is the ones going from our inside local out to the inside global. Remember the inside global is the outside address. This is on port 80. Uh, going to that web server and port 80 going to that web server. It looks like because I probably refreshed or it went a couple times. Uh, and then right here, this is the ICMP. This is when it, the, the NAT translation it created when I went ahead and pinged the web server. So that's all good. But look at all this goodness. Mm -hmm. It's deciding that that is also it's what is that? What is that? Port 53 UDP? Boy, that sounds familiar. It sounds like DNS. It sounds like that's its DNS server as well. So it's trying to do DNS lookups from that device. Awesome. 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 So I promised we'd do both ways. Uh, let's do it. Right. So I'm going to go into global configuration mode and I'm going to remove this cause they are, they are, um, I'm not going to say incompatible. It's just different configurations. I'm going to do a no IP NAT inside source. Oh, of course. Uh, we'll go back and do a clear IP NAT translations and uh, wipe out that table. Clear IP NAT. Clear, clear. Man, it should be clear. Isn't it clear IP NAT? What am, what am I missing here? Clear IP, clear IP, clear IP. What on earth? 
clear nothing. <laughs> That'll teach you clear nothing, clear and nothing, something. Well, that, so, so this is the, I was, I was thinking, man, I, I, I've typed that command a thousand times. So, so this is, okay, welcome to the, the, the limitations of the uh, simulated world. Uh, we have no clear IP net translations just because we don't. So uh, we'll give it some time. Maybe, maybe we'll even reboot. So let's do uh, config T and do a uh, no now yeah see we're uh, wait a second how about we go this way i'll go under interface gi one slash zero let's let's kind of uh crowbar this thing do show ip interface brief just make sure i'm in the right ones and i'm gonna say you are shut bam let's might as well go under interface g zero slash zero and you are shut as well all right now let's see if i can yank that uh yank that guy out of there hey, oh man we're losing we're losing everything oh spf's going down we just took the network down uh man it's 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 just not gonna it's it's wanting to clear why don't we do this tell you what i could either wait patiently or i could reboot the router uh let's see if we uh okay um, so uh, here's, here's what we'll do. Uh, we'll end the lab and by golly, we will do this. I will get, uh, we'll, we'll do it. We'll actually, this will be good practice. We will completely, um, reconfigure NAT from scratch. I totally forgot to put the, uh, put the screen back there. Uh, we'll completely reconfigure it from scratch. So I'll launch it again and I'll do some editing and cut this out. So it just boom pops up for you in a second. Here we go. All right, there we go. Lab is reset and it just it can't hurt us to go through the configuration one more time. Let's head over here. Global config show IP interface brief because my memory is like an elephant. I've heard they had bad memories. So I'm going to go into interface GI 0 slash 0 IP NAT inside and we'll do interface GI. What is that? IP uh, no 2 slash 0 and IP NAT inside. And interface G1 slash zero IP net outside. Uh, I'll do, let's, I'll, I'll, I'll do IP uh, access list standard netted. And we will, wait, netted. Permit 10 zero, 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 zero. I always thought I should have been a movie announcer in another life where, you know, netted. Those IP addresses never saw it coming. Um, so... <laughs> It's I'm, I've been I've been teaching a long time today, so you're getting you're getting the uh, loopy Jeremy. So uh, natted and we will. OK, now we need to do a nat pool IP nat. OK, so this is where we're going off off the deep end. We're going on the other path of doing this IP nat pool. And we're going to say the pool name will be the public uh, IPs. Right. And we will say this will start from one nine two one six eight dot one dot. Uh, it was what 10 right right here. We're gonna go 10 through 15 as our pool and IP address 192.168 oops 15 and we will say the net mask will be 255.255.255.0 uh, In that case, okay now we've got our pool of addresses now same story um, We will tie them together by doing IP NAT inside source so same exact thing i'm going to snap from the inside out that the list of addresses will be netted and we will go to the outside pool of addresses where we go off a little different fork right uh, instead of going out the interface i'm going to go to the pool and the pool that i'm going to use is going to be the public ips right here copy and paste that in and on top of that all i'm going to overload it to make sure that we use those ip addresses effectively now we can shoot on over to the client PC. I think the whole thing got reset. Uh, so let's um, let's go here, 192.168.1.100, and bam, we're seeing it. And let's just let's just start a little ping going. Ping 2.16. Oh, where are you now? Ping. There we go. Ping 192.168.1.100. Got a little ping action. I'm just curious. NS lookup. Ah, see, that's that's why. Previously, we we're getting all those lookups. Is this the, the the DNS is set to that web server? So when I'm when I'm doing lookups here now, obviously the the DNS is is failing. IP config forward slash all. That's why we're getting all of those little translations out on UDP port 53. So let's verify they're all going out on the pool of addresses now, right? I'll come back here and do uh, show IP net translations, and sure enough, look at that. Everything's going out from this. This is our inside local meaning I own it, it's private, 
to the Inside Global. I own it. It's public, right? And this is the first IP address of our pool. You see U uh, UDP DNS requests. You see TCP web requests. And these are the outside local and outside global, which always, for, for most of the translations that we're going to do, are going to be exactly the same. That's the public address that we're communicating with. Good stuff. Cool. That, my friends, is configuring that. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.